host for the podcast. Looking forward to talking some softball with you and getting to know you a little bit more. Uh, so thank you again for joining me. I'm not going to take up a lot of your time today. Um, but before we jump into these questions I have for you here, give me a brief introduction about yourself and then we'll jump right in. So I'm Riley Schull. I'm from a very small town in West Virginia, Hamlin, and I go to Lane County High School. I'm a junior. I'm a pitcher and I play for Team North Carolina Hind out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for that. So yeah, let's start off with first talking about um, your recruitment process. I know you uh, have committed to Louisiana Tech to play softball there. So let's just kind of take me through that. It's kind of where we always start here for somebody that's committed already. So kind of take me through that process and kind of walk me through that of how that was for you and your family, just kind of what all that entailed for you guys. So first I started on a local travel ball team from the time that I was six until the end of my seventh grade year. And so the whole goal of that team was to build a high school team. We all go to the same high school now. So going from there, and then after that team disbanded, as some of the girls started going into high school, I joined Team North Carolina Carolina Hind. Um, Coach Kevin, he started getting me introduced to the whole recruiting process. Like, it is such a big process that it's so much more than what you would think it was. Yes. I was going just from camps that I to t- teams that I really liked. And it was this whole big process where it wasn't just I showed up. I was getting into contact with coaches. I was sending emails every single tournament. I was looking at camps for teams that I wanted to potentially go play for. And so whenever I first joined the team, he asked me to make a list of every school that I was interested in. And so after I made that list, we went from there and he kind of just broke things down for me. And so he started getting into contact with those coaches, helping out on his side. And so just emails, camps, just all those different things that added up to help me go into the college world. And another big thing that a lot of people don't really think about is social media. Twitter is such a big thing for softball. So weekly I was posting videos, trying to um, catch attention from college coaches. And so that going into my recruiting summer was very, very beneficial because I had all these coaches that were looking at me and that were getting in contact with Coach Kevin that helped me get through that recruiting process. And so last summer was my recruiting summer, and it's a really big summer for me. And um, mentally, it was really, really hard. I had just came off of a very successful regular season for high school ball and unfortunately lost out in the state tournament. And so that loss really took an effect on me mentally. And it took me about halfway throughout that summer to finally regain my confidence and control. And it's a really funny story with Louisiana Tech because at first I really didn't know anything about them. And um, the tournament before our nationals, we played in the Atlanta Legacy. And it just seemed like every single college coach that I was interested in came and watched me play. And I was super excited. And I felt like I pitched really, really good. But it kind of just felt like I got the same feedback from them that was kind of like, you're really, really good. I just don't know if you fit into our program. And yeah. for me, it was it was very, like, it just hurt really, really bad. And so then going into California, I was coming in there and I'm like, it just felt like nobody wanted me. And My mom, she prayed all summer. My whole family did. Our church did. She asked for prayers for me, just that God would close doors that were not good for me and that weren't going to put me in the best situation for life. And she said, I just feel like something's going to come out of left field and it's just going to take us by surprise. And so we got into California and we played against a team and Coach Chelsea from Louisiana Tech came because the other team, their pitcher, was committed and she was going to go play there. She's actually a freshman this year. And so I pitched and I did pretty good. I was pretty like, I felt confident about that game. And coach Kevin was like, you did really, really good. And that's our last tournament before September 1st. And we had no contact with them. And then September 1st rolled around and coach Chelsea reached out to me on Twitter and we set up a call and we kind of just went from there and it kind of seemed like the rest was history. Like over the phone, we connected really, really well. It kind of, it was one of those things where like she would say something and I like, I'm just sitting there and I'm looking at my mom and I'm like, I think the same thing she does. (laughs) And so as a pitcher, like having a pitching coach who I can talk to 
and who speaks in the same terms as me was very, very important. So later that month, I actually went down for my um, unofficial visit and it just, everything clicked. It's a small town. It was what I was looking for. And one of the biggest things that I looked for in the recruiting process and in a school was something that fit me academically and athletically. And so my major, I want to go into biomedical engineering and Louisiana Tech has a very, very good engineering program, specifically biomedical. And the coaches, like some careers and some majors, they some teams just don't, they're like, we don't fit in there together. Yeah. But they were like, you go for what you need to. You're going to come out of here with a degree. And so having that support from them and also having that family atmosphere that they have, they are all they they connect really really well together and they're a very great family unit and so me going 13 hours away from home and feeling like I have a second family there was very very important to me and it kind of helped my parents nerves too because after they talked and met with them they were like we feel comfortable sending you here with them we feel like you are going to be put in the best situation for you menti- mentally physically athletically and academically and so you know, going from all these high dreams that I had as a little kid that I wanted to go play on the like women's national team. I wanted to be like all these different things. And as I grew up, I realized that softball didn't define me, but it was just something that I got to enjoy doing and going to a school that saw me as a person rather than just a softball player. It made the decision so much easier. And, you know, thinking about it now, it's one of those things that I'm just like, God worked that out. It wasn't anything that I did. God had it all in control for me. He had that plan. And so all of those um, struggles that I went through, it just, it was all part of this plan. And so now I feel very comfortable and super excited that I get to go play there for four years and, you know, make the best of my college experience with them. Awesome. Well, first of all, thank you for sharing the experience there, because I think that's it's such a great um, thing to kind of re kind of remember, you know, your experience with all that, because like you said, there's, there's so many, it's like a roller coaster, you know, with that recruiting and what's going to happen. And uh, you know, you have those normal human feelings coming in fear or whatever else it is. But like you said, it's, it's one of those things where I guess you can call it like a God thing, you know, that God, um, you know, kind of worked it out, like you said, and you talked about what your mom said to you and everything. Um, so that's a tremendous experience there that you had. So thank you for sharing that. So now, I want to ask you just through all of this stuff, whether it's the recruiting, you know, playing uh, school, just everything that you're doing at a high level, what kind of keeps you motivated every day to keep doing all this stuff? So obviously I have my family who is my biggest support system. My dad and I have like went to the field almost every day. Our yard is destroyed from our pitching. (laughs) Like the grass does not grow there anymore. So Having my parents and my siblings, my brothers there who support me through everything, through every mental block that I've kind of went through, through every struggle I've went through, to have them there, you know, it just reminds me that I'm not alone no matter what. They're always there. They're always supporting me. And our high school program has a little sis program. And so, you know, having all these little girls who come to our games and they look up to us you know, it just puts me in my shoes as that little girl who used to look up to those high school girls and to my coaches who believe in me and who who have seen me at my worst and seen me at my best. And they still say that I am good enough. Having them there really helps me stay strong and stay determined no matter what. But most importantly, what has been the biggest struggle for me is finding myself through softball Like coming up as a little girl, I had all these big dreams and everything. And so those moments whenever I am in a struggle and I am in like a bad slump or situation, reminding myself of how proud six-year-old me would be makes the biggest difference. And so no matter what day it is, understanding that I am fulfilling the dreams that the little girl that I used to be was, it just, it makes it so much sweeter to go every day and to have the ability and the opportunity to get to play. Yeah. And I think as, I mean, so many people, um, as you said, and I like how you put it, because I talk about this with a lot of people. Um, I've had numerous people kind of talk about this. Like we had a, 
basketball player um, who's in college now for basketball. She had such a tremendous high school career, just all the awards you can think of. But she said sometimes she's got to think about that little girl shooting basketball, you know, in the driveway. Um, because I think we can get lost in the journey of, you know, whether it's busyness or, you know, whatever's going on around this life in general, uh, that you kind of forget about those dreams. So I like how you kind of remember like, hey, that little girl would be proud of this person here now. So thank you for sharing that one. So now I want to ask you kind of an on the field question. What, and obviously this answer that you're going to give will probably change throughout your playing career. But as of right now, what would you say your biggest strength is on the field? I'm a very big mental person. I see the game as a mental, like 90% mental, 10% physical. And so yeah. right now my biggest strength for me as a pitcher would be my composure. We just finished up sectionals. Unfortunately, we got beat out, but out of our section, three of the four teams were ranked in the top three in our division in the state. So it was a very, very big, very competitive section. And my composure throughout the whole situation and throughout this whole season, I feel like has been the strongest thing for me. Um, the crowds, everything that kind of goes on around, none of that really matters to me. You know, it's yeah. just really me and that catcher. And we're working to give our team the best ability to win. And so coming into these situations and mentally being able to get through them, no matter like understanding that I can't control everything in the game and just being in control of myself and in control of my mind has been the biggest strength for me. And I think it's what has really made me succeed throughout these times. Awesome. And I think that's, you know, I mean, obviously it's, um, there are some sports that are more those mental things. Like, you know, I think softball, baseball, golf. I remember talking with a golfer the other day and was talking about stuff like that. And, and your composure is something, especially like at your position too. I think that's something that uh, is very key to have. So I agree with that. So now I want to ask you just between, you know, playing sports in general and, and your sports softball. Um, and obviously you've got a ton more to go and to learn. But as of right now, what has just playing sports taught you in your life that you can kind of use every day in your life? Um, I have a lot of things because softball and just sports in general is not only about athletic ability, but it teaches a lot of life lessons. And yeah. some of the things are determination. So no matter like if you're in a bad slump or whatever's going on to be determined to get through that situation, to be able to get through that at bat, get through that inning has been it doesn't just help in softball. It helps in life and in school and those tests, whenever you don't feel the most confident, but you're determined to get through that. Whenever you have an assignment that's due and you just don't feel like you're at your best, but you're determined to get through that, you know, that plays a part in every section of my life right now. And that goes into hard work. So no matter what I do, giving myself a hundred percent of my effort to get through it has helped tremendously because me giving all my effort in softball helps me give my whole effort in my academics helps me give my whole effort in my family life and to be a hundred percent there for my family and for my friends and those around me. And I think something that's really big with softball is to respect the game and your peers. You know, softball isn't a game just about you. It's a game about a whole team. So no matter if oh, I'm yeah. in a bad situation, I'm not doing very well to be there for my teammates and be the biggest supporter it has taught me a lot about how to respect others and even respect my competitors because, you know, at the end of the day, we look at each other as um, competitors on the field. We're going against each other, but we're not each other's enemies. And so respecting them and even seeing them do good throughout life. You know, I played against a lot of softball players who have went to college. And there's one especially that is actually at UNC Charlotte right now pitching. And so just seeing her succeed at the next level and seeing her still be there and to congratulate me, but then I'm also there to congratulate her. It didn't matter if we played against each other on the field. We all have the same goal in the softball world. We all want to be the best that we can be. So to be there and to support others has been a tremendous help in my life because I feel like it makes me a better human to not bring hate to each other, but to bring joy and to bring respect. And the last thing is gratefulness. You know, I don't have to play softball. I get to play softball. I have the opportunity to play softball at an elite level, an elite travel ball, to have the opportunity to play at the next level in college. And 
not everybody gets to do that. So taking full advantage of those opportunities and to thank God that he blessed me with the abilities to and to thank him for giving me people around me who support me and who want to see me do that, especially my parents and my coaches, because not everybody has a support system like I do. You know, I went through a really, really big mental block. Um, It was the year of COVID and it just felt like my whole world was falling apart. I just, it was one of those things I couldn't even throw. Like if I threw the ball over the plate, it was a win. And so it like, we laugh about it now, but in that moment, having my coaches who still believed in me and they didn't give up on me, it made me respect them and the game so much more because softball is a game of failure. And so understanding that through those tough times, I was still given the opportunity to go play no matter how frustrating they may have been at me and how frustrated I was at myself. I really understood that this game means so much more and the people around you really impact who you are. So understanding that this game is a game that you fail at and you succeed at, but to respect it and to really be grateful for who you have become through the game. Yes. And I, I mean, I love um, those things and I'll speak to a couple of those things you said, because it kind of brought me back to when I had a conversation with a, a couple uh, sports players here, they're going to be going off to college. And I was at, I was actually doing an in-person interview with them and they had a big game that night. It was a basketball game. One's going for football, one's basketball. Um, and their uh, the coach always told them, and their system they play at this high school is, is amazing. They're always in Final Fours, and they're winning championships. Just a, an outstanding program. But the key that they, they say there is, hey, because you, you, I would talk about effort. You talked about the effort earlier. Um, like he always says, hey, you give me 100% of effort 100% of the time, and I can kind of live with everything else. You know, if you just give me that effort and, and show me that all the time, and then – one of the things you said that I really loved um, is like you get to do this. It's not something you just have to do um, because you're right. Not everybody gets to do it, especially at that next level. I mean, there's very small percentages that people get to do that. And I'm sure you know that now, but like, you know, and that, that also that same coach that night, it was a huge game. There was like, I mean, the crowd was crazy, but he was telling his team, he was like, Hey, like just have fun with this. Like not everybody is in this position. Not everybody gets to do this kind of stuff. And I think gratefulness is a thing that um, if you carry that with you, like you are now throughout your college career, it's going to do wonders for you outside of just the sports in general. So I appreciate you sharing that with me. Um, So now I'm going to kind of jump on to some funner questions because we kind of got some heavy stuff there for a minute. But thank you again for sharing all that stuff with me. I mean, especially your struggles. I really appreciate you sharing those because I'm a person. I love being just authentic about stuff because we all have those struggles every day. There's nobody that doesn't. uh, So thank you for that. So I'm going to kind of ask you some rapid fire questions now just to get to know you a little bit more. So give me your favorite movie. Miracle. By far Miracle. Love it. I, I My wife and I actually watched that because it's on Disney uh, Plus. So we watched it the other night. Wow. Uh, I love it. Uh, what about if you had a one superpower, what would you choose? I would choose speed. I get laughed at a lot because I'm a little <laughs> slow. And so... I would love to just be everybody. So kind of like the Flash or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, okay. What is your favorite time of year? Summer. Now, now that's going to change too, because like you said, you're going to you're going to Louisiana, so the summers in Louisiana are yeah. very different than the uh, probably <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> so, um, very different from here. Oh yeah, it's definitely. Yeah, I've been to I've been to West Virginia a few times and. I've been there in the winter, so it's a uh, that that's actually a winter. Like I'm, I'm from the south. We don't really have an actual winter, so uh, yeah. So now, what about your favorite thing to do to relax? Like when you try to get away from everything, eat school, softball. What's your favorite thing to do to relax? I love to just sit and listen to music. Really, just get to kind of relax and clear my mind and just listen to some good music. Awesome. There, there's really nothing like that. I mean, I enjoy like. My wife and I will kind of hop in the car one day and like, just go, you know, like, and and do that. So last one I got for you, who is somebody that's your favorite athlete? Somebody you kind of look up to, somebody you kind of watch a lot. This can be past or present. Who is somebody like that for you? I'm a little biased because my two pitching coaches are Lauren Hager and Brittany Pickett. So I get to work with them a lot and I look up to them a lot, a lot, a lot. But 
I've always looked up to Delaney Gorley. We pitch very, very similarly, so it's very important, and I just love watching her pitch. Awesome. Thank you for that. So now, last thing I want to ask you before I let you go today, um, talk, tell me about, you know, what's going to happen in your life coming up and kind of what you're looking forward to. So next up, I now have summer season for my travel ball team. So we'll be on the go a lot, kind of living out <laughs> yeah. of a suitcase. And, um, I'm very grateful for Team NC because they've really became my second family. And I don't get to see them a lot throughout the springtime because of West Virginia's um, softball rules. So yeah. just getting to see them and get to spend time with them and get to work with my coaches and see all of my teammates and all of the parents, you know, we're all really, really close. So just super excited to get to go on the road, get to play some good softball and get to be in the heat and get some good food. Awesome. I mean, yeah, I was just talking about this with somebody. There's really nothing like it, like good weather, you know, playing the sports you love, um, traveling. Those are things that uh, definitely, um, I mean, you're going to go on to play in college and all of that, but I'll always remember that because those, those are times like it's going to be, especially with your family, you know, you get to do that with, with people like that. So, well, I thank you so much for your time today. I uh, thank you for sharing everything with me. I look forward to getting this posted up and letting people just hear a little bit more about you. So you have a good rest of your day. I'll check back in with you kind of uh, summer um, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about how you're doing there. So thank you very much and have a good day. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. See you later. Bye.